Hello, everyone. My name is Ali Cedeno, and I am the founder of Women Offshore. Women Offshore is an organization that supports the careers of female seafarers around the world. I am a female seafarer myself. I'm a graduate of the United States Merchant Marine Academy, graduated in 2008, and I've worked on ships since graduation. So it's wonderful to be here with you today, even though we have to meet virtually. Congratulations to Sanjam and the team at Maritime CEO. Thank you to all the sponsors and partners for making this happen. A few years ago, I got to meet Sanjam person and I've run into her a few times at conferences around the world pre-COVID. And Sanjam, you put together an amazing lineup for this virtual conference. I remember talking to you originally about this idea that you had to support female leadership in the maritime industry. I remember being amazed by all of your ideas, and it's absolutely wonderful to see this come to light. So congratulations on this amazing day, and thank you to all who are tuning in. You're going to learn so much from all of the speakers about what they're doing to reduce the gender gap in the maritime industry and empower women around the globe. So I'm a female seafarer myself, and for me being on the water working on ships, it's both personal and professional for my reason why I created women offshore. You see, I needed it myself. I needed a place where I could ask questions and share ideas and, and learn from women who had more experience than me. I didn't have a place like that before Women Offshore. And so I created it. And I ask you that you think of something after today ends on what you can do as well. What is a concept that you come up with that can empower women around the world? Even if it's something small, that's okay. Start small and grow it. I started Women Offshore as a blog because even though I wanted to start a nonprofit, I didn't know how, and that was okay. So I started blogging because I knew how to run a blog. And I got the URL, womenoffshore.org, started with interviewing ladies who had lots of experience at sea, and it grew from there. Within their stories, I realized there were these lessons learned. They had sea stories that we could all learn from. And maybe if we happened to be in a situation similar to what we captured in these sea stories, we would be able to get through those, those experiences a little bit easier. So the website grew thanks to the women that I interviewed and people who hopped on board to help out. We created a mentoring program a podcast, and we have our own annual conference as well. And it, it was virtual too because of COVID. So whatever you can think of, go ahead and go for it. We need you as audience participants to take your ideas and implement them. While you're going to listen to so many amazing speakers today who've implemented great ideas and are doing good things, to be honest, we need more. We need everyone involved. Everyone needs to help make a difference. Women, men, does not matter what your gender is to reduce the gender gap. There's not one way to do it. There's no one reason. It's, it's multifaceted. And so whatever concept you have, if you want some help, if you want to bounce some ideas around, please feel free to reach out womenoffshore.org. You can contact me and my team. I'm happy to talk to you about your ideas and maybe we can partner as well. So I'm pleased to introduce to you this panel. We're going to hear about the state of the DNI and i in the maritime industry, diversity and inclusion. We hear from these ladies who are around the world, share their experiences, and get to know them. Again, Think about what else you can do. Be inspired by them. Figure out how you can contribute as well. Maybe you will be speaking at a conference like this one day with an idea that you came up with at this conference. So enjoy it. Take lots of notes. 
And I hope to hear from you about what your idea is to reduce the gender gap in the maritime industry. Thank you. Uh, welcome to this uh, panel on diversity and inclusion. And I'm really happy to have so many uh, superstars within that area in this session. And I really look forward to hear all of your perspective and also best practices and why you care so much about uh, diversity and inclusion. So I think we'll start with uh, giving the word to Aisha uh, and please introduce yourself uh, a bit. And then also, why are you passionate about diversity and what is your uh, most important takeaways? Hello, everybody. Uh, greetings from Turkey. Uh, my name is Ayşe Aslıbasak and uh, I am the port captain of Midship Group and I'm also, uh, actually I'm someone and who has sailed on bulk carrier vessels for a while and then after chose a being a safety superintendent uh, ashore side and now I'm the port captain and I'm handling operations of the vessels, uh, bulk carrier vessels that we charter uh, in under Midship Group. And I'm also the co-founder of Shifarers platform and that we, have, we, we founded in Turkey uh, for being mentors and mentee, uh, for becoming mentors and mentees together in Turkey and for Turkish seafarers and also worldwide, uh, in the worldwide. Uh, I believe that it, uh, the diversity and inclusion actually uh, for both the terms are um, very, uh, how can I say that? Makes me excited uh, to talk about uh, because <laughs> because because I I, I I was a young student and uh, uh, twelve years ago and when I first got in maritime job and so and we were never about we we, we were never uh, know about that these terms and uh, when we become in more management side especially for the maritime companies and it become more visible and to discuss these matters um diversity uh, is something like that we we, we are working uh, for the you know, uh, United Nations uh, developed goals and for 2030 uh, and the gender equality is one of that and, gen and SDG 5 is uh, one of that. And, uh, I, 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 and the diversity is also becoming um, a popular topic and to talk about. But I don't believe that it's not only for the women, diversity means it's not only for the women, it's also including uh, the different cultures and different nations becoming together and, um, and different working styles becoming together and, and, and also different generations becoming together. I think in 2020, we need to discuss about that more the generations, more than the, more than the genders and more than, and we need to discuss more the uh, generations and the diversity is this. And for the inclusion side, uh, I, actually, I'm not a person and to make the good definitions and, you know, the, my, my, my uh, home language is Turkish. And so I'm not good, so good at it. Uh, but I can say that inclusion is not uh, only for, uh, for women uh, who are involving uh, into positions. And it's also, it's, it's a mentality that uh, management, it's, it's just like a management strategy. The inclusion is a management strategy and inclusion, inclusion of women, inclusion of generations and inclusion of the youth and to the management. So I can describe it like that. That's great and great to see that we include everyone in the diversity perspective. Thank you so much. And we will hear more from you uh, coming later. I have a lot of questions I want to ask you as well. But let's hear from the others. So we have also Cecilia Östermann here, a senior lecturer in maritime science. So uh, who are you, Cecilia, and why are you so, so passionate about diversity and inclusion? Thank you very much. And uh, I'll uh, just continue where I actually left off. Uh, I've also sailed before. I started as a, well as an engine apprentice actually 30 years ago. And then I studied, so I worked as an engineer, engine officer in the Swedish Merchant Navy for about 12 years. I also worked at the, as a naval shipyard for a few years. I sort of uh, entered into to occupational safety and health. So that's really my, my, my profession now. So I'm a researcher in, in ergonomics and occupational safety and health. And one of the most important issues in the work environment, I would say, is that you have a safe, both physical, but also psychologically safe work environment. 
and that the work environment and the working conditions are not only designed for 50% of the population. So, I mean, diversity and inclusion for me is, is basically it's human rights. Mm. We should design organizations and workplaces so they fit all people. Everybody should be included. And working as, uh, as a woman in a, in a men's dominated uh, profession for, for many years, it's of course, I, I build on my own experiences. And, and so, so what I do now is that I want to, to advance both research, of course, in this area. How can we translate all these theories into practice? How can we do this in, in, in practice? And also, of course, as a, a lecturer at the Maritime uh, Academy, I want to make sure that, that my students have a, have a safe and good and fun study environment but also prepare them for, for, for the coming life. I mean, the, their futures as seafarers as, and also as future managers of the maritime industry. Mm. Sounds like, like they're lucky to have a teacher who think about practice uh, and taking theory to practice. I will uh, ask you more about that coming really soon. Thank you so much, Cecilia. Then okay. we have uh, Avin, uh, who is uh, studying natural science and she works for an oil and gas company and has sailed oil tankers and gas carrier. So uh, introduce yourselves, Avin, and why are you so passionate about diversity and inclusion? Hi, how are you? I'm Avin and I'm from Ireland, a very small island off the coast of England, if you don't know it. Um, <laughs> The reason I'm so passionate about diversity and inclusion is because I myself am a member of the LGBTQIA plus community and I think everybody should feel safe to be who they want to be wherever they are, especially in a work environment like being at sea where you live and work in the same place and you should feel like you're accepted on board and feel like you're just like everybody else. It's not something that should be discriminated against just for that so mm. that's kind of my stand on that one mm. and I definitely Great. it's um like with regards to it's gonna sound really bad but being a gay woman I find that sometimes men find it slightly easier to work with gay females as opposed to gay men which I don't know it's just kind of a weird phenomenon but I definitely think that everybody in the community, like the LGBTQIA community, should be accepted rather mm. than just the gay women or, I don't know, I think everybody should be included and everybody should be accepted for who they are, regardless of their sexual orientation or gender. Mm. That's a really good point. And it seems like you have, uh, all panelists have a lot of common, including everyone in the diversity perspective. I think that's really beautiful. Thank you, Evin. And then we have Siv, who's the managing director at Martin Bergen. Uh, hi, Siv. And hi. why are you so um, caring about diversity and inclusion? Well, uh, hello uh, from Bergen. Uh, while I'm living in Bergen, I'm not from Bergen. I'm from a very small island um, on the west coast of Norway. And uh, growing up, I always found it actually very unfair that my cousin got to join my grandfather at the fishing vessel just because he was a boy and I was a girl and um, I mean <laughs> I don't know if this inspired me to to you know go towards the stream so to speak but for me it's about equal opportunities and it has to do about culture uh, in the way that why do we choose uh, the different things that we actually choose and how we are shaped by culture. Um, uh, because I think that has to do a lot about, you know, why maybe there are so few women actually working in an industry because we're not aware about the opportunity that the industry actually represents. Mm. So for me, it's actually about just opening the eyes of the women who is working in the industry, but also opening the eyes for the young girls who are going to make their choices pretty soon uh, of all the you know great opportunities that the industry actually represents that's really great uh, caring about the next uh, generation and they're probably our biggest hope uh, <laughs> at least for now thank you so much uh, Steve what about you Eli uh, you have also been worked uh, working a lot on ships since early mid 80s so 
uh, it's interesting to hear who you are and uh, what are your passions when it comes to diversity and inclusion. Hi everybody, I'm Ellie. Um, I've been working uh, for a ship owning company for many, many years. Uh, also popped in uh, working for a supplier for a short period of time and then back to the, the ship owning side. Um, and having been in this industry for 30 plus years, um, well, let's just say there has been a development and it has been an improvement. But the basic, I think for, for me is that we can't be content to just have 50% of the intelligence uh, working in our industry. And, and we need to market it. We need, as, as Steve was saying, we, we need to tell everybody that this is a really exciting and motivating area to work in. And particularly now that we are headed to vote towards the, the green shift, so to speak, and, and how to go about going forward. But I think mainly it's, it's because we, we need uh, the gender equality or where we need to contain the gender equity that we have regardless of gender and, and then we must accept that that um, it's all about the process of being fair to both women and men and any gender and and it's it's uh, it's also a fact that shipping very often and particularly at sea haven't taken into consideration that there might be particular needs for females at sea um, like we just see now that the, the, the CBAs, the Collective Bargaining Agreements uh, for our Filipino seafarers doesn't contain anything about a pregnant seafarer, uh, which is quite strange in year 2020. So <laughs> there's a lot of work to be done still, and, and we need to be on the barricades and we need to motivate the young girls, the coming so that they are they are there when we need them and that we can actually show them through our work mm. that it's possible so mm. it's it, it's really an internal motivation because being a mom of both a girl and a boy um there shouldn't be any differences um mm. so um and i mean i think the rest has already been said so that would just be repeating yeah that's cool thank you so much uh, ella and then I would like to go back to you, Aisha, and uh, ask, you were talking about including everyone in the diversity perspective, and not only a woman, but all the other perspectives. What do you do in uh, uh, your company in order to actually include everyone and make sure that we have a more diverse workforce in the future? Thank you, Chris, for asking. Um, uh, I, I just want to uh, explain uh, some story. I, I tell tell you some, my story about in my company in Midship Group, uh, because because it 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 is well I, I can explain well and uh, about this question. Um, when I first got into this job, I was I was working in more uh, technical side as a safety superintendent because I was working on board and I was I was involved in more technical jobs before in my previous job, but when I come here. I chose to become a commercial, more, more commercial experience. Uh, and so it, it was a different area uh, rather than the ship based ship job, actually. You know, it's, it's different. It's kind of a different world. And so my company uh, suggested me and they offered me an, a job about operations executive. And so what happened uh, after three or four months, uh, we got a new customer and my boss asked me, Hey, Aisha, do you go to Wessels? I, I asked her, how? No, I can't go to Wessels because I, I'm here for operating the ships. And so uh, I cannot go to Wessels. And so I, I will be in the office and I will handle my Wessels and from remote. And, and he asked me that I need you because uh, we have a new customer and we need your knowledge. And so we want you to be, to be our port captain and to supervise our loading operations for the scrap cargoes. And then my, my story is started with this because uh, I, I see that and uh, for this, this strategy and he asked me, yes, he believes in me that uh, I can do it because I was already doing it uh, when I was working on board. And he asked me that, and also he believed me uh, that I can handle all the operations when I visit the vessels in European ports. And when I go to ports, he believed me that, okay, I, should, I can trust her and, he can, and, and, she can, and she can handle it. And, the, and my story started with this. How can I explain the strategy? Um, 
it is like that in in our office in our istanbul office and 50 percent more than 50 percent of our uh office office workers are women uh, and also our accounting department and our operations department and other departments and we are all uh more more women are placed in our office and i'm also handling all the loading operations of the vessels and by my side only and i can say that it is the opportunities and if we need uh, and and the companies companies give some opportunities to women and women need to uh, well evaluate and uh, catch up, catch this strategy uh, together to catch these opportunities together and and then after the success is coming and i think the strategy of the company is coming here and giving the equal opportunities because they never ask they 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 could also look for uh, a man and for handling the operations of the vessels and uh, for for visiting the vessels and going to vessels in european ports and so on but he didn't do that he 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 gave the opportunity to me and he asked me that can you handle it i said of course i can handle it and so uh it is just a strategy of equal opportunities and i can explain the our company's um diversity and inclusion strategy here with the giving equal opportunities cool so uh, making sure that they have a conscious strategy on giving equal opportunities to both men and women that sounds like a good idea uh, then we have also reshma joining she has uh, beca became one of the first indian also among world's very few female mar marine pilots so welcome uh, reshma and uh, please make a short introduction and also say something about why inclusion and diversity is so important to you thank there, you chris yes. for the invite and uh, thank you everybody for being patient with me i had a i got stuck outside um but yeah so i started out in 20 uh, 2006 uh, in the maritime industry and uh, I started out with the Denmark uh, maritime shipping giant, uh, the Musk, uh, AP Moller and Musk, uh, when I started out with a dual competency program and uh, I did the deck and the engine uh, competency programs and uh, I followed that with onboard training on both the departments and uh, post which I joined uh, after getting my OOW uh, certificate. And then I went forward to uh, becoming a trainee pilot in 2011 and uh, 2018, after, seven, after six and a half years of training, I qualified as a pilot uh, 2018, ever since been working alone as an independent pilot in a river port in the port of Kolkata. Uh, and, uh, Fortunately for me, this is um, uh, one of the most treacherous rivers in the world, uh, which is uh, navigable. And also we have uh, roaring tides and uh, very, very uh, bad weather conditions. And uh, you know it makes it challenging on one side. And it's also, um, it's a good thing that it gives you uh, no monotony in your job. So every day is a new day and every ship is a new ship. So each day things differ. There's no, um, you know, same old, same old in the job. So completely enjoying what I'm doing uh, for a career. And um, it's, a, it's a mixed bag of uh, things to be the first and the only um, female maritime pilot in the country uh, because you sort of have to clear out the forest for uh, the entire <laughs> next gen uh, because there has never been one and there is no one else after you immediately after you so there's a lot on the shoulders whether you like it or not you become the flag bearer for the whole uh, women community here uh, but hopefully soon there will be much more women who can you know look at me and uh, think of it like a like it's not impossible for women to be pilots and mm. uh, yeah that's about me and uh, about why diversity and inclusion is so important is um, you know over time it has taken me years and years to you know just get a basic acceptance among colleagues amongst uh, ship uh, cr the crew of the ships i work on and it's still 
not you know it's it's a very very almost an everyday incident where we are uh, you know looked up with raised eyebrows and oh you're the pilot you know when i enter the bridge almost every other ship you know the masters and the crew they are excited they are surprised they are wondering oh he's the pilot okay and there are a lot of uh, people who actually ask me are you the pilot or should i wait for somebody else you know looking behind me and waiting for another pilot to come so this is an everyday uh, occurrence even today in 2020 which is actually not a great thing to brag about this is where the industry is actually lagging behind and uh, it is a you know it's a sad situation and um, mm. and also uh, to be to have come this far i have had to um, struggle a lot um, when it comes to acceptance um, because everybody's you know they have their own preconceived notions about women oh they cannot do this oh they can do that uh, you know they are moody and they are this and that and if you are just a little bit assertive about yourself it's a oh she is bossy she likes to be bossy so whereas the same same traits for a man would be called as leadership qualities and then they will be praised for it and they will be promoted uh, for that so it has taken years for me to change and it's an ongoing process it's still not perfect um, day in day out so it is something i i am faced with every day so obviously i want to change it and also i i accept and agree why there would be other women who are apprehensive about coming into this profession so that mm. gives me a, a responsibility of sorts that i need to change this and change it now so you mm. need to be the change which you want to see so uh, i thought maybe i'll start from from me thank you reshma a really great introduction and uh, a good point to actually be the change you want to see and then uh, i would like to connect back to cecilia you were talking a lot about how to teach the students to uh, make practice out of this theory so what would you suggest your to your students or everyone watching today to do to actually make a change when it comes to diversity and inclusion in the maritime industry uh, i think uh, the, it's the same uh, answer as we talked about before we we need to have a, a clear strategy it, it doesn't depends if it's towards students Uh, or, or if it's uh, within a company or, or some other actor within the industry. I mean, a, a good strategy eats good intentions for breakfast. Uh, we, we can't just run around and, and do a lot of uh, things haphazardly. We, we have to have some idea of why are we doing this and, and what do we actually believe will happen when we do this and how can we evaluate? Did we do the right things? Did, the, did we get the expected outcomes? So, so I, I'd say our work is... Uh, is uh, is dual. We're working on several fronts, of course, and, and uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, it, it's partly about taking care of our students so, so that they have a good experience, learning experience, but also to prepare them. And, and one of the things we do is to make sure that we give them role models. We know from, from research that having role models is very, very important. And if it's something I really miss growing up, And, and also as a young seafarer myself 30 years ago, it's having role models. It, I mean, of course, I've had a lot of, of, of male role models, but I didn't have that many women role models. Mm. Uh, people that looks like me that I can see, oh, wow, I want to be that, uh, I want to be that woman. And we also mm. need role models at, at the, um, enough high level, if you see what I mean. I mean, I can't only have role models as uh, Anna Solberg or, or, or <laughs> Paula Harris and, and those kind of women. I, I need to have women that are just above me as a young sea captain. I want to, to look at the, at the Reshma and say, oh, wow, she's a pilot. I could be that. Or, or mm. wow, she's a harbor master. And, and look, she's a captain. So that's what we try to do. So we, we try to make sure that when we have guest lectures and events, we make sure that we also invite women that talks mm. about ex exciting things. We, we try to make sure that the classroom activities are, are done and performed in a, in a inclusive, with an inclusive pedagogy. So mm. it's, um, it's very important to stress that 
equality is not a numbers game. It's not uh, counting the numbers of, of women or counting the, counting the numbers of any minority. It's mm. about actual power and influence. And that's where mm. what we want to achieve. Mm. Thank you. And I think uh, role model is, as you say, research really showed that that's really important for everyone to see someone they can become because then you see the opportunities. So if we take that further to Avin, uh, how do you kind of see uh, for you mentioned that gay men, for example, find it difficult to maybe be open or see the opportunities because it's so difficult. How can we all who are listening today be better role models for the LGBTQIA plus or other communities that feels like minor minorities on uh, the sea? Um, personally, I think the main thing to do to become what we would call non LGBTQIA plus members would be allies. And um, the main thing to do would be to do some research about like your countries or the country that you're interested in, their history, their rights for LGBTQIA plus people, um, transgender people, how they stand on same sex marriage um, and same sex adoption and things like that. Because there's a lot of differences in a lot of countries. Like I know, for instance, I think it was back in 2018, India only legalized homosexual homosexuality. And in Ireland, it was only in 1993 that it was legalized. Hmm. And then gay marriage only became legal in 2015. And we were the first country in the world to fully legalize it. So I think it's very important to like kind of look into different countries and find out about their rights for people because like it's not like it's just on board that they have these challenges. Their challenges are in there, like even when they sign off the vessel. So it's there's always kind of going to be something there. For them to have mm. to deal with. That's true. To know uh, that history in a sense. But uh, to those who are a part of the LGBTQIA plus community then, uh, what would you say to them who are like maybe afraid to be themselves, to be open, uh, don't feel safe? Um, I know myself when I joined my first vessel, I was closeted. I was out at home, out and proud, but I was a little bit scared in a way to see how people would accept me. So I kind of very, very slowly released the information that I was in fact with a woman and mm. just kind of felt it out and was very discreet about it to say the least because I was nervous about letting it out there essentially. So I think oh, definitely it would be a good idea to kind of like feel it out a bit and just, just to be sure. So you're not putting yourself in a situation that you don't necessarily want to be in like mm. yeah that's a good balance to be uh, like there to be open but also be safe in uh, all practical matters in a sense thank you uh Avin. and then i was uh, going from that like uh, the lgbtqi uh, community is 10 percent of the populations we usually uh, say but then you mentioned uh see that 50 percent of the population is actually uh like female and we kind of drop out of 50% of the um, brains out there. But mm. when it's so obvious uh, and everybody knows, why are we not at 50-50 yet? And what can we do uh, to move faster? Because it's, this is moving way too slow. Well, I mean, uh, in Bergen at least, we're talking a lot about change and that the industry is looking at huge changes in terms of um, uh, clima and different technology uh, and energy mixes, but also digitalization uh, and so forth, and that we need to do things in a different manner. But if we recruit, you know, the same people that we've always done, how are we then going to change, basically? Mm. Uh, so what we see in our organization, we are a member organization, we see that more and more companies are coming to us and asking, what can we do uh, to attract, you know, uh, female, young female uh, students into trainee positions, but also they're asking, what can we do to get, you know, women working in our organizations to actually uh, want to take management and leadership roles. Um, and they, 
uh, for me, the impression is that they really want to uh, to do this or to to be more open and to you know equalize the numbers. But change is different, very very difficult. I think everyone wants to change, but no one wants to change themselves basically. So, so how do um, we get them to change themselves? Because well, that's a very I think it's a long 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 journey, but. <laughs> Uh, but we are trying, you know, in Maritime Bergen, and we have, you know, very different um, initiatives, both in terms of, you know, having visible role models where we have um, both female, but also men uh, at different levels coming in to young students, you know, to show the different areas where they can work and why they should come in. We also do this to young students and start that, you know, 12 years and upwards. Uh, can, you, also, can you mention a few uh, concrete role models that people can look up uh, if they're interested? Do you have some names for us? Well, I mean, uh, about a year ago, we had uh, a conference in Bergen, uh, which was called Poshuen, which is at sea. And um, uh, during that time, um, Cecilia was actually there and she gave <laughs> yeah. a lecture. And uh, for me, it was a very good lecture. I would say that she is a very good role model for everyone. And she talks um, very direct on what needs to be done. And uh, she is a good motivator. Eli, who is also here, is a very good motivator who, I mean, I've been working in Bergen since 2006. And I think I have known about Eli since that time. And wow. she has not only been important for me, but she has been uh, very important for many, you know, um, women coming up at my age, but also younger. Uh, so I think, you know, this mentor mentee mentality is very important also going forward uh, to match, you know, the the older and not so and the younger uh, basically just to talk out and you know don't give up uh, a little bit as uh, Reshma also mentioned you know when you come into a meeting room in in my from my point of view and all of the the participants there are men uh, then sometimes you know you get uh, the idea that you're the secretary so just to get, you know, a hint that don't be the one who offers them coffee, because then you will always be the girl who offers coffee, offer your opinion, basically. So, you know, all of these things just to get the tips here. Cool. Thank you. And then I think we need to move on to Eli, who's the biggest motivator of all. So what's your secret recipe to motivate all these like amazing female potential uh, talents for the future to reach for the stars? Well, she makes me very humble and I mean, honest, <laughs> she speaks that way because I, I think I think the main thing is that if you've been in the battle, like many of you describe yourself, right? Um, went to uh, a big training about marine pain some years, or quite a number of years back. Uh, there was like 100 participants and I was the only female. And, and then the question came about, whose secretary are you? Uh, well, I was not a secretary, I was the procurement manager, so uh, I was buying more paint than many of them. Um, <laughs> and also traveling to Japan as, as a female uh, with only men around you, I mean, you, you, you feel the glass ceiling is there, right? So I, th I think the main thing is that you, you need to, 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 to walk the talk, you need to show, uh, through example, yourself that, that you you're not hiding in a corner, you know, you, you take your space and you, you deem your space because that's the only way, right? And, and then you need to, to, uh, to ensure that uh, what you say and what you do is, 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 a, is the right combination, right? That, that you can't say that, yeah, we are trying to hire females, but we can't find anybody. Okay, then you, you need to require that in any, any process, you have to have two at the end, one of each gender, right? And, and, mm. and likewise for the seafarers, yes, it's not done overnight. We have Filipino seafarers have had since the early eighties. Um, and it took a long, long time before we got started on, on making sure that we got Filipino female seafarers, but we need to push through. Um, and then of course you need uh, in order to demonstrate that you walk the talk, you need also to, to be visible out there, right? 
to be in the foras and, and to, to stand on a podium and, and talk out loud, because I think that's the only way, because uh, you can't do it halfway. You need to be, mm. you need to go all in. So, mm. so um, it's also, of course, a lot down to the company you work for, right? And that they are active, they are on social media, they demonstrate that they mean what they say. Because uh, mm. uh, it can't just be, um, you know, um, an intention, like Cecilia mm. said. It has to be a clear strategy. It has to be an objective. You need to focus on the sustainable development goals and have, yes, that is where we're going to be. And we measure it because it's only when it's being measured that you can actually achieve something. If you don't mm. measure, then it's hard. So mm. so I think it's, it's all the, the combinations, but it is the willingness from within to make it happen and to be a part of the solution, actually. Great, that inspires me. I, I'm calling you to start to work for your industry afterwards. So <laughs> uh, really great motivational talk. But I just wanted to connect back to Reshma uh, who joined us uh, uh, early on here. And you talked something about being uh, India's first uh, CFR pilot. What are you doing? And you said that there's not many in pipeline, but what are you doing uh, to actually make sure that there will be the second and the third and the fourth and probably many hundreds coming in the future? Yeah, like I said, uh, you know, we, you know, we keep talking about inclusion and diversity. I'm also a vocal member of the, you know, like, like now in the panel, there's everybody who's fighting for diversity some way, some way or the other, somewhere uh, around the world. So I also am very vocal about uh, what are the regulatory measures that uh, we women who are already in uh, need to be firstly comfortable so we can get in the next one. And, you know, the next one is not questioning me saying, Reshma, what did you do all this time? So I'm making sure that, you know, the next one and the next uh, many uh, will not have to face what I faced uh, when I came in. Because, uh, you know, when we talk about, you know, amongst nationalities, when we discuss, like, say, with the Western world and then the Eastern Asia region, we are, like, way many decades behind where, uh, say, what Cecilia or El Ili uh, have faced many, many moons ago, and uh, we are facing the same issues today. So that is the mm. gap we have and I need I think we need to badly bridge that gap and get down to this so what I do mm. now is um, you know demand for uh, sometimes the demand itself is considered uh, as a you know as a demand but what I'm talking about is it's, it should not be a de demand and this is a necessity for a person mm. who's working in this sort of a fun in a role like this where uh, say from the day of detection of a pregnancy, for example, um, you know, there are people, there are pilots who climb ladders uh, during pregnancy, but it depends on individual. So there can be multiple issues for every woman, how she takes, uh, you know, how she works through her pregnancy, how, what sort of management she would require, uh, what sort of leave and uh, break from work would she require. These sort of things are still not in place. There's no regulatory uh, uh, safeties for the women in my role as yet. And I'm still working on those things. And it's still an ongoing process. I have not gotten there. I cannot brag that everything's all fine uh, and, uh, you know, fine and dandy for the next woman. But yes, <laughs> I'm working on it every day. So there are, uh, there were no absolutely no conduct regulations which said something like he or she everything mm. said the pilot you know he ha he will board this and he will do this i'm like i was i was just telling them that this is just not acceptable first of all change your language in the um, regulations and then we need regulation regulatory measures for uh, you know for comfort of the employee like uh, company policies regarding, say, maternity discrimination is unacceptable elsewhere, but it still happens in most of our country uh, seafaring uh, professions. Like when there mm. is a seafarer who's taking a break, she's, she cannot come back as yet. 
there are not many indian se- women seafarers who have come back from pregnancy and joined back so we are trying mm. to you know i'm part of the organizations which work towards giving them a voice and uh, speaking about this that you know after a break she cannot be penalized for taking that break which is you know mm. uh, the break was for a natural um, you know it's it's part of the cycle of life cycle of a woman so we are asking mm. for uh, getting rid of maternity discrimination where she does not have to choose between a child and her career and mm. uh, we are also talking about the regulatory measures in place for employees when it came to gender discrimination and harassment there's no policies in place yet so mm-hmm. we're working on it we it, it's an ongoing process there is an inertia for change and we're trying to fight it every day and it's it's Great. really not easy yeah. to bring out the figures but then yes and there are also i hear that in some shipping companies um you know i'm part of the organizations like vista and also the iwsf which is the international a uh, women seafarers foundation so there mm-hmm. again we are discussing about pay parity in 2020 there's a wages parity for women and men on of the same qualifications and then again also for promotions uh it's almost natural they call it natural that you know the man is always preferred for the position so we are also talking to discussing with companies to have policies to recruit more women but as a person i will say i have to admit that i myself have a lot of bias which i don't realize so mm. what i do personally on a personal front is i work on my uh, gender bias or uh, your unconscious biases yeah i i start with my awareness and then i can propagate it to others you know these mm. are something as infectious like covid you know your when you get your penis <laughs> you can you can talk to everybody around you and then you can change your thought process and maybe all others around you so when yeah. there's people who say who who talk about oh she's the only pilot and you know you know women are also doing this and i say why not and why are we even discussing yeah. this why are we addressing yeah. me as a she pilot as a woman mm. pilot just call me a pilot i don't want the mm. madam pilot or the lady pilot so this it slowly gets into my colleagues and then through my colleagues it goes to other people so mm. these are interesting things that we can work on yeah i think that's a really really good point that we all can work with our own biases and be a part of the solution and not the men versus women or any other minority or groups but uh, i have to say there are a lot of allies there are a yeah. lot of allies <laughs> all all yeah and so we need to That's take good. them in and then have a conversation going on and these conversations are mind you never comfortable mm cool and uh, you're such amazing role models every single one of you and i could talk with you for hours but i can see that we are getting to an end as well and we just uh, topped the iceberg in a sense but i would like to have a sentence at least or like one minute from each what is your dream for the future uh, and that's maybe where we can end up with a lot of hope and a lot of encouragement for those who are listening so aisha what's your dream for the future uh if it will be a one sentence uh to create more equal world because i really want to make uh, especially when i see now uh we had a uh, face many challenges and 20 years ago as women uh while we were the uh first females of this industry but we are in 2020 and we don't need to face or the generations that they don't need to face the same challenges because because mm. world changing and so we have different challenges so we need to adapt to world and we need to create more equal world for everybody for human that's great thank you i would love to live in that world uh, what about you cecilia what's uh, your biggest wishes for the future ahead that i don't have to participate in any more panels with <laughs> gender and uh, diversity i wish uh, there were no more panels yeah cool 
I wish for the same, but I really enjoyed talking to you. So I'm glad you participated. Yeah, no offense this, so. for the rest of you. I've, <laughs> I've enjoyed talking to you, but I think it's, uh, I don't know how many panels of this I participated where women yeah. discuss uh, equality and diversity. And, and it, this is not a question. Uh, gender equality is not a, an issue for women. And uh, LGBTH plus questions is not a, a, an issue for, for, for that community. It's all our, mm. it's all our responsibilities. It's an issue for us all. Thank you for a good uh, remark on that one. What about you uh, then? Uh, I think we have Sieve here uh, as well. Yes, Sieve. Uh, well, it's difficult to top uh, Cecilia's quote there because I <laughs> actually agree with her. And you know, just this weekend in uh, Bergen and in Norway, there was this uh, huge debate in the newspapers on um, hiring women, but that was into the finance sector. So mm -hmm. Ellie might know which case I'm talking about, but uh, yeah, um, you know, just equal opportunities. Uh, and if we're going to succumb the challenges that our industry is facing, and that is basically to reduce uh, greenhouse gases from our vessel, we need to think differently. So, yeah. Hmm. To reach our goals and ambitions. And then I think you really touched upon something important as well. Let's learn from other industries. Let's reach across. As you said, many other industries have succeeded and many still struggle. So let's stand in this together. I think it's a good idea for the future as well. What about you, Avin? What's your biggest dream for the future? Just a place where everybody is safe and happy to be who they want to be and everybody is treated as equal regardless of their gender, sexual orientation, race, anything like that, religion, just yeah. where everybody's accepted would be nice. <laughs> would be nice. Sounds like a great place and also I think it's uh, useful to be reminded that a lot of people, 50 plus men straight, also feel unsafe at their workplace. So it's not only the minorities or the different genders, but it's about including everyone and make a safe workplace. Uh, final remarks from our like top inspirator and motivator and superstar Eli. Uh, What's your biggest wishes and dreams for the future? Well, I can only support what Cecilia said, but 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 I think that that uh, we need to ensure that that everybody has the same opportunities, the same rights, the respect, regardless of, of, of gender, and and that we establish an equal playing field because that is what it's all about, right? That that it is equality, um, regardless. And uh, but we, we we cannot give in, and that is the important thing. We are still here, endless mm. meetings, but we cool. won't give. I, in. Yeah, I think that's a really good uh, ending for this session. Don't give in. Uh, a lot of action, and uh, remember that uh, you have a lot of good role models out there, and you have all the names here. So look them up, follow them. Uh, and be insp inspired by those amazing people we have had in the panel. And hopefully soon they will see you in their back uh, breathing uh, and then wanting to take their jobs. Uh, so I wish you all an amazing uh, future and dreams ahead. And let's create a more equal maritime industry for the future. Thank you all for joining and I hope you had a blast and got a lot of inspiration from these amazing female role models here. Thank you.